today I'm coming to you live from what we call the parlor. Um, this is my son's desk that I'm sitting at. And um, I want to talk to you about our Apology of Science curriculum. And I'm hoping to do some more videos like this where I kind of give you a really in-depth look at some of the major components of our homeschool curriculum. Apologia has been a major component of our homeschool curriculum for like eight years, I think. Um, it has just been a huge part of our homeschool family. And I think I started using them when I first met Dr. Jay Weil at a homeschool convention. And I was just so impressed by the quality of the books that um, I knew I wanted to use them. I will show you actually our entire curriculum now that I use from elementary all the way up to my high schoolers. And because that's pretty much all we use is Apologia. We have a few supplemental things here and there, but really it, it is mainly Apologia. They are fantastic Christian-based, um, creation-based science as well. So let me start with our elementary books here. Um, all of my kids, once they have been reading solidly for about a year, so once we finished the phonics curriculum and they've had about a year of um, just consistently and progressively reading and getting better, I feel like they're ready for this. And I will tell you, when I started with these, um, I read them to the kids. However, the, these are written to the child themselves. And as part of my you know, quest for getting the kids independent in their learning, I decided that this would be a great jumping off point for that for my elementary students. And so once they've been reading for about a year solidly, I feel like this is written at that grade level where they can definitely handle it on their own. And this is kind of where I start with the independent work. So we always start with Zoology 1. You don't have to. You can start anywhere in them. They are written by Jeannie Fulbright. And if you ever get a chance to hear Jeannie speak at a homeschool conference, it is well worth it. Even if she's speaking on notebooking, and I'll talk about that in a second, even if she's speaking on notebooking and you're like, I'm not a notebooker, go ahead and go. Because it is going to be fascinating and you're going to learn a ton. Now, real quick on the notebooking. And sorry I'm so out of breath. I'm pregnant and huge and it's hot. And so I'm just kind of, oh. so forgive the deep breaths and all of the sighing and all of that. Um, okay, so all of these have notebooks that come with them and they're already done by Apologia. You don't have to really do anything except purchase the notebook. However, we are a very haphazard notebooking family. I like the concept of notebooking. Um, one of the sessions I went to with Jenny Fulbright, she actually had the audience notebook on orca whales and I still remember things she said and that was years ago. So I do highly recommend notebooking. I think it's a, fan a fantastic concept. However, we are so hit and miss with it that I didn't feel like it would be a good idea for us to use it with these. Another reason for that is that I do this completely independently with my kids. And so um, I, I don't really want them to have to worry about notebooking on top of that. So if you are a notebooking family and if you'd like to try it, I do highly recommend them. It's just not something that we use. Okay, so let me open it up here so you can kind of see what um, is inside. So the sections are really short. Um, usually this is, this is one that I would probably start with maybe third, fourth grade. It just depends, again, on how long your reader's been reading and how you want to handle this. If you want to start reading these to them much earlier, they are absolutely going to love them. Um, but they are written to the child, so you don't have to worry about, um, you know, your child not understanding them if they do independently read them. So I, I kind of let my children discern how much they feel like they can read in a day. They can read just one section. They can read quite a bit. They can read all the way to the try this. These are different projects. Um, there's also there's also different experiments and projects and notebooking things and all kinds of things in here that they can do. I also let my children decide which ones pick their interest and that they would like to do. 
they are all with household items. So really, I just am able to gather the stuff together for them and they get to try the project on their own. And my 11 year old has really enjoyed doing the projects way more than my child who's now 15. When she was doing these, she didn't really like to do any of the projects. And honestly, she still got a lot out of it. The projects are more for those children who like the hands-on approach. And so, you know, you just have to be discerning there with that. It's not integral to the program that you do the projects or the notebooking. But let me scooch over here a little ways to show you some other things. Okay, so they have, they have the notebooking activity in here. Um, they show younger and older students so that you can kind of decide which ones are best for your kids. They have a quick, what do you remember? Um, this is just a good review for your children. Um, keeping records, you know, there's a nature thing. Here's an experiment they can do. There are no real tests, which I love because I feel like at this age, science is not about tests. Science is about observing and becoming someone who really understands nature and the things that God has created. I don't think there's any need for a test. And so I really like that about Apologia. So there's zoology one, two, and three. Um, my 11 year old is currently in three. And these are the creatures of the fifth day is basically fifth and sixth is what they're going through. Um, then, and I thought I had all of them and I realized as I was putting this together, I don't have the chemistry one for the elementary. So I'm gonna have to get that because I really do love these books. You have um, Exploring Creation with Astronomy. There's Botany. And then this was my oldest daughter's absolute favorite. In fact, this has so influenced her that she is planning on taking the advanced biology with Apologia rather than doing a different um, science. And in fact, in addition to the sciences she's going to already need to do, she wants to take the advanced because the advanced biology is more like an A and P. So this was just, she just loved this. And um, she just loved learning all about how the body works. And um, she's doing biology right now. She's absolutely loving it. Also, that particular daughter is an artist. And so, and she's also a photographer. So being so interested in biology and anatomy and physiology has actually helped her art and her photography. So I see where, it, I mean, they go hand in hand and it, it has been incredible for her. And so she's really enjoyed that. So this was the last book that she did. And um, like I said, my, my 11 year old is going to be working through these books as well. My 10 year old is getting ready to start them. He was a little slower in the reading. I felt like he needed a little bit more time to prepare. So we've been having him read more. And I actually, I think he's probably ready this year now. Okay, then on to junior high. Um, in junior high, you do, and <laughs> another thing I wanna say here is I have old copies of some of these. Some of my stuff I bought at um, like used homeschool book sales and that's perfectly acceptable. I will maybe at some point upgrade, but right now it works. So I, in junior high, for the most part, you're doing these two books. Um, and I think this one has changed what it looks like. Uh, this is general science and this is physical science. Now this is a transition point for us. So I told you that I have the, the science in the elementary ages is something I start to have them do independently. There's no tests. There's, it's kind of a low stress, read the book, enjoy what you're learning about science. And they absolutely come to me all the time with little tidbits of information they've learned. However, in junior high, they transition to tests. So there, there are tests that they have to take in junior high. Now you can choose whether or not you actually administer all the tests or things like that. But for us, I believe this is really an imperative time to go ahead and start administering tests and teaching your children kind of a low key test environment so that when they get to the high school ages, the testing is really no big deal. 
get a quick drink there. Um, so how this works is, let me just grab, let me grab the newer one here. Okay, so again, written to the student and short bits here and there, little insets that are interesting. Um, everything you need is here. And as you get to, they're called modules. And there's like on your own information and experiments still that you can do. There's lots of things there. Um, I do not require all the experiments. Um, again, it depends on your child. If you have a child who really thrives on hands-on things, then absolutely do the experiments. But the, the oldest child I have, well, my two older ones, um, my oldest son did do a lot of the experiments. My next child is just not into experiments. She doesn't need those to learn. They actually sometimes distract her from what she needs to know. So she, I don't think she did any of the experiments. Um, so here, okay. So you'll see at the end of the chapter, there is a study guide for the module. And in this study guide, they are basically going to answer these things and this is going to give them the best shot at passing the test. I will tell you this, that it is not a memorize all of this and you're going to pass the test. It's not how it works. It's not a this is the test in a different form. You have to think. Your child has to learn how to translate what's here into answering the questions on the test. They are not the same thing. So if your child is expecting, you know, ABC, because that's what I did on the module study guide, to be on the test, it's, it's not there. So it could be a little frustrating at first for them. And that's why I feel like the junior high ages are such a transitional time for learning to take tests, um, because they need that transition from I'm not taking any tests to I need to learn how to take a test. So they once they've done their study guide, you actually have the solutions to the study guides here. So they can either write it out on a piece of paper, which I think is what my daughter does, um, or they can Xerox off the study guide from the book, and then you can check it. I don't. I have them check over their actual study guide modules because I feel like they're going to learn it better if they looked up the answer and realized, oh wait, I don't have that quite right. So then what my children do is they come to me and they say, I'm ready for test such and such. And so I take the test, and I think these are the solutions. So the actual tests are in a different booklet. Um, so I take, no, they're not, never mind, sorry. Um, the tests are toward the back here. So I will print this off and I will give it to them and they will do the test and they will hand it in to me. And then when I have some time, I will go through because all the answers, it's all contained in one book. I was Forgive me for saying it was two different books. This is the, this is the uh, general science test manual that I have. So then I'll just go through and I'll check them. I'll give them back to them, telling them what they missed, and um, they will kind of go back through that and just you know look it up and, and see what they missed. And most of the time they've done really well. So um, that has been fantastic. And I will tell you my oldest child who went through Apologia completely um, for all of his science he scored really well on the ACTs in science, so I was very pleased with that. I felt like we did a really good job with choosing the curriculum that um, he needed. And it, again, we do this almost completely independently. So um, it, it does work, especially for a busy mom. It does work. You do not have to be totally hands-on with this curriculum. Okay, so on into the high school years. Um, again, I am using an old copy. You can even see it says set $10. That was a great deal, <laughs> but, but it is older. Um, this is exploring creation with biology. When you have an older set, if you go and buy the lab kit, it's not going to quite match up. And you kind of have to, you know, finesse that and make it work for your family. 
we did buy the lab kit. I am a firm believer in dissecting things. <laughs> so um, we did do the lab kit that goes with the newer edition, but it worked out fine. I just, um, I had my kids watch some videos on YouTube about the things they were dissecting and some informational videos there. And so it worked out just fine. Um, my 15 year old sophomore is currently going through this course. And like I said, she's loving it. And then there is a marine biology, there's a physics, and there's a chemistry. The chemistry is hefty. <laughs> it is a big old book. And my son, who was a senior last year, this is what he ended on with the chemistry. Um, he did not need another lab science. And so what I had him do is I had him watch the lab videos online. Um, I didn't really want my house burnt down or anything like that. So he watched the videos online. I will tell you that Apologia has classes online. So if you are really unsure of yourself in the area of science, consider the classes. They're a really good way to kind of put the science teaching into the hands of a professor who's been doing this for a while. Um, the Solutions and Test Manual, again, this is also a big, big book. So um, that was what my senior did. And I think what the track that my sophomore is going to take is probably going to be the biology. And I'm guessing maybe chemistry with just watching the labs online and then going into the advanced biology. That's that's my guess is where she's gonna be. I am going to kind of leave that up to her if she'd rather do physics or marine biology. I'm fine with that too. Talk to you a little bit about requirements and how you choose what you would like your child to take in high school in particular. It really doesn't matter prior to high school what your child is taking in science. You want to give them a foundation. That's what the general science and the physical science is for is to give them that foundation. I will say the elementary books give a fantastic foundation. So don't feel bad about that either. It's not wasted time for sure. Um, the way that we have decided is that I take a look at the state curriculum requirements for science. And depending on which state we've lived in, it, it has changed. And I use that as a guideline. Now, I live in a state where I do not have to go by what the state says. I can choose whatever sciences I want. So you can do one of two things. If you're in a state where that's, you've got a little more leeway like that, you can either look at the state requirements or you can look at college requirements if you have a child who's college bound and decide from there which science classes they ought to be in. The other thing you can do is simply go by your child's interests. Like I said with the advanced biology, that's my daughter's interest. She wants to do that. I think that's fantastic. So we are going to move into that and um, not really worry about what the state requirements are here because uh, we don't have to. So those are some options you have for choosing science curriculum in the high school years. A lot of states only require you to have a couple of sciences with one of those being a lab. Some states require three. Um, you wanna look again at your college. If you have a child who's college bound, look and see what they're wanting from your child. It would be kind of traumatic to not have the science classes your child needs when they get to college and say, hey, you really actually should have had this and this. Um, but for the most part, colleges just wanna see that you have done some science and that your child has worked hard at it. So I will tell you one more thing about Apologia. It is a tough curriculum. It is not an easy curriculum. It is something that your children may struggle with here and there. They may think, man, this is really tough, and they're right. In fact, Jay Weil even says in the front of one of the textbooks that this is like college-level work. It's hard stuff. So be prepared for your child to be a little frustrated by it, but please understand that just because your child is frustrated by it does not mean it's a bad curriculum. It does not mean you need to find something else. It means that you need to persevere. Your child needs to kind of slow down with the material and really, you know, ingest it and mull over it. 
Maybe you need to get out some videos that help with the information, but I do think Apologia is the premier science curriculum. I really do. Um, I see where they just seem to stand head and shoulders above everything else, where they have spoken directly to the child. They are explaining it in a way that makes sense. They are giving the child plenty of time with the material and they are allowing the parent to not have to, you know, be this intense micromanager of the work. And so I, again, I just highly, highly recommend Apologia as a science curriculum. So with all of that said, um, I know you might have seen the banner at the beginning of this video, but right now there's a back to school sale going on for Apologia and you can get these materials at a great rate and the shipping is really low too. So I would highly encourage you to run over there and grab that sale before it ends. It does end soon. And if you've missed the sale and you're watching this later, that's fine too. Go ahead and try to get your hands on some Apologia material because I think you will be thrilled with what you find there.